I will show you in this video how I go about bubble glazing. I actually did vote on my Instagram. That's kind of how I figure out what colors to use. Um, some of them are just per per personal preference or based off of what I know sells. Um, so I do know that I do a lot of blue usually. I have a lot of blue bump cups because those sell really well. Um, I usually make sure to include that. Purple, my customer target market, like all the fairy tale story nerds, really like purple. So, I mean, I like purple too, so no judgment there. But yeah, I usually end up making a pretty decent amount of purple things, and my work tends to have a lot of purple. One, because I love the color, but two, because it just sells well. And, um, but I did do blue and purple already. I did some black, just as basic colors, um, just for fun. Um, it's not a color I do a lot of with the underglazing, just because it doesn't tend to sell as well as some of the other colors. Um, I did get a lot of requests for turquoise, so I think that's one of the colors we're going to be doing today. And, um... I think I'm also going to be doing some greens, too. Um, that also is a color that tends to sell really well for me. Um, and, you know, matches my branding and stuff. So, I think that's what we'll do today. We'll just do some turquoise and we'll do some green. I'm just doing a plastic cup this time. Um, but what I do is I usually do, like, a squirt or two of this soap. Um, but it doesn't really matter as long as you get some kind of dish soap, uh, I should say don't get like a colored dish soap, like green or blue. Sometimes they put coloring in them, but um, I tend not to use those. I do use a clear soap. I usually put a squirt or two in these cups. You can kind of see, hopefully you can see. There's not like a ton of soap. Um, I do put enough to make bubbles, but I don't put a ton in because I did find, tip, I did find that um, if there's too much soap left in the cup or the mug or whatever you're bubble glazing, it can cause the clear glaze or whatever you're putting over it to crawl. Like the glaze will kind of repel itself from the soap. So I try to not use a ton of soap, just enough to create bubbles. Um, yeah, so we got the soap in there. Uh, and then I'm going to put a little bit of underglaze in. I can't give you an exact measurement for underglazes. Um, so I do tend to use speedball for this because um, you do generally need a lot of color, a lot of underglaze. Um, but as far as giving you exact measurement, it's hard because it depends on the color. So like this black, I don't really need as much of it as I do say the pink. If I were going to make my pink, if I were going to make pink bump cups, I would need a lot more because it's such a light color. Or, you know, if I went to do gray, I probably would need to use more underglaze than I would need with the black. So it's kind of hard to, like, give you an estimate. A lot of it's just going to be you figuring out what works best. And it does require more underglaze than you would use for, like, general scraffito or things like that. Um, I tend to... Underglazes usually last me a long time because I do so much scraffito. But I notice I go through it faster when I'm doing the bubble bump cups. It says teal, so um, this is my turquoise color and stuff that I know sells really well, so I'm going to be doing some of this. So I usually, um, you just take a good chunk. Um, it is kind of drying out a little bit because it's hot in here and I've been using it a lot. That is chunk. I'll probably put more than that in there because um, teal tends to be a harder color to show up. So, I will probably put more than that in there, but we'll start with that. I'm not really particular about, like, how much of each color I put in there. You kind of just, I don't know, I kind of just judge based off of what it's looking like. You know, when I add the water, if I'm getting enough color, if it looks like a dark enough color to show up. Um, sometimes when I blow the bubbles, if I notice the bubbles are mostly clear, I will add more color because I know that it's not really going to show up. Um, I usually have to add color after like two or three cups if I'm doing a bunch of the same color. I usually have to add color after that just because you'll notice the bubbles are starting to get lighter and lighter and lighter each time you do it. And just as an FYI, if you're thinking about doing bubble glazing, it likely will make a big mess. So be prepared for it to make a big mess. 
I mean, that kind of adds to the fun, but I've never really figured out how to do it without making a mess everywhere. So that's why I usually do it outside or like in the middle of my studio where I can like mop it up and wash it later. Um, you know, like get the hose out and spray it all down and stuff um, because it does, it just makes a big mess. Um, so if you don't have a lot of space or you have to kind of keep your area neat, this is not a technique I would suggest um, till you have like a little bit more room or a little bit more uh, capability of making a mess, <laughs> but yeah. All right, so here we go. We got a decent chunk in there. I don't really add a ton. I do a little bit at a time. Like I said, it really takes through some experimenting and stuff. Um, and each color is a little bit different for like, um, usually the soap quantity is the same, but as far as color and water, usually I have to adjust it depending on the color. So because this is a lighter color, I'm using less water, more color, and about the same amount of soap as I would other colors. All right, so we've got our piece. We've got our little concoction. We're probably gonna end up adding some more color because it is very hard to see that color. Definitely need more underglaze in it. All right, so here we go, take two. I'm gonna try it again. We've got more color in here. I added a little bit more water because obviously I blew tons of bubbles, so I needed more water and just a tiny bit more soap. And we'll try this again. There we go, that's better. Now you can see a lot more of the color in the bubbles. Yeah, that, that worked a lot better. All right, so I went ahead and mixed up some blue. I am, I changed my mind. Um, I just remembered that I, the other blue that I used is really pretty, but this one turns out like really, really good. Um, like very, very vibrant color with the underglaze and stuff after it's been fired. Um, it just dawned on me that I should probably make some of this blue. So that is what we're gonna do. So we got our bump cup. I'm gonna go ahead and do some bubble blowing and yeah, hopefully we'll get pretty, pretty vibrant color. Also, the bubbles pop, tend to pop a lot faster in the sunshine than they do in my studio. So I can do these bump cups a lot faster. Because I usually try to wait for all the bubbles to pop before I go ahead and remove the piece. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but I usually try to just wipe the surface that I've done the bubble glazing on before putting another one there so they don't end up with all that underglaze on the bottom. Just makes them easier to clean off and prep for glazing. So that is kind of how I do the bubble glazing. Um, I do let them dry out for a couple of days. I'm actually probably going to put them back out in the sun for a while just to make sure that I get all the underglaze and water and everything dried out um, because I usually like at least wait 24 hours if not longer um, and then put a clear coat over it um, and make sure to put it on real good and thick. Um, and yeah, that's usually how I get them to turn out. 
and occasionally they'll have to be refired because of the soap or whatever or has kind of caused the piece to crawl. Um, generally though, if I do a refire and I cover up those pieces that those parts of the clay that didn't quite have the glaze adhere to them, um, they usually turn out okay. Uh, so they usually do pretty good on the refiring. Um, the only trick with the refiring is is if you do have to refire, you get less color. Um, I do notice that the more times the piece has been fired with the bubble glazing, the less of the bubbles you see. So that's something to keep in mind. That's why I try to be careful with just having them be um, done really, really well the first time. Um, but they they have, in my experience, turned out okay or not had any like glaze problems or needed to be fired more than once. Um, and yeah, so that's just kind of how I do my bubble glazing. Yeah, I hope you learned something. I hope you have fun bubble glazing because it is a really, really fun technique to do. Um, as long as you don't mind making a mess, I guess. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye!